So we'd like to begin with a warm-up um, just to get the uh, patient moving, uh, kind of activate the nervous system and increase circulation prior to doing any of other activities. So we're going to be starting with some warm-up here. The first thing I want you to do is we're just going to use the arm poles that are associated with the rehab station to do some reciprocal movements, back and forth movements of your arms. So that's the first thing I want you to start out with is just going back and forth nice and smooth with your arms in kind of a rhythmic fashion. So see if you can do that kind of like you're rowing. Good. Kind of get your shoulders into that. If you can move your, there you go. As long as it's comfortable though, okay? This is just should be a nice warm up. Shouldn't be painful, okay? So you may start with just the upper body for a minute or two and see how they do with that. Now I'm gonna have you do this. You can, you can stay holding on to these, but I want you to try marching with your legs. Let's just start marching like this while you're sitting there in place there. Good, so you're just gonna do some rhythmic marches. So we might do a minute or two on the legs individually but you look so coordinated that we're gonna to try to combine everything at once. So go ahead and let's stop for a second. And now you're gonna do your arms and legs at the same time. So go ahead and, there you go. Excellent, so now we're getting a little bit of warm up of the upper body and lower body at the same time, okay? So for individuals that can stand, um, we're going to do our stand, uh, a warm up and standing. So the first thing I want you to do is we're going to use our activity poles here, upper body activity poles. And I want you just to stand. I want you to do some nice moving of those poles back and forth. Just think about some nice smooth movements of your arm, I mean of your arms, and just kind of making sure your trunk kind of rotates there nice and just kind of let it all happen nice and smoothly. Excellent. So we could do that for a minute or two to warm up the upper body. Now what I want you to do is we're just gonna do, hold on to the poles here just for a little bit of support. You'll notice we also have her in the harness here to give her a little security if she had some significant balance deficits. If she didn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily need the harness support for this. We're gonna do some marching. So you can hold on to the poles. I just want you to do some nice, easy, rhythmic marching. There you go. So there's a good little warm up for that. Now, if we're feeling really adventurous, we're going to combine it. So we're going to do marching, and you're going to move the opposite arm with the opposite leg. That's how when we walk, we swing our opposite arm with our opposite leg. So see if we can do any arm movements. Don't think about it too much. Just go ahead and try. It's not, there's not a real right or wrong way to do this. Excellent. You're doing great. So now we're getting a nice upper and lower body marching activity and some warm-up of the full body. So now what I want you to do is we're going to do some just overhead reaches, okay, for this warm-up, next warm-up procedure. So what I want you to do is just put your arms like this, your thumbs up, and you're just going to reach up over your head, kind of in a little bit of a diagonal pattern there. Good. You don't have to go straight up, but just kind of out to the side. There you go. And then bring them back down. And as you do this, go ahead and take a deep breath in as you breathe up. Up as high as you can. Reach for the sky. Excellent. And back down. Very good. Let's do another one of those. Good deep breath. Excellent. And back down. Okay. So you can do anywhere from five to 10 repetitions of those, depending on the patient's comfort and abilities. Um, so the next warm up activity in a standing position we're going to do is some overhead reaches. So right now she's got some arm support here for some security. She's, of course, she's got the harness and she's also got her back slightly touching the pad here for a little bit of proprioceptive support or security. So go ahead and take your arms. You're going to lower them at your side there and you're going to raise them up over your head. You can kind of raise them up in a diagonal fashion. So yeah, as best you can, as high as you can, and then back down. Good. Let's do a few more of those for me. See if you can give me a couple more. Kind of out to the side with thumbs up. There you go. Kind of like you're doing a V for victory here. Kind of out like this. Excellent. Reach for the sky and back down. Nice work. Okay. And so we're getting some nice range of motion of the shoulders, but also getting a little trunk extension, an upper trunk extension because her back is supported here. The next activity or exercise I want you to do is you can just kind of have your hands resting gently on your legs there. And we're going to work on some shoulder shrugs backwards. So watch me. You're going to take your shoulders. You're going to shrug them backwards and then down. Okay. So bring them back, squeeze those shoulder blades together and then push them down. Good. Just nice, easy breathing. Just nice, comfortable breathing. In through the nose, out through the mouth. 
Good, just think about squeezing those shoulder blades together with good posture, head up nice and tall. Excellent, good. So the next warm up activity I'm gonna have you do is some shoulder shrugs. And your hands can stay rested there comfortably. I just want you to work on bringing those shoulders back and together and then down, okay? So then back, together, and down. Just nice, easy breathing while you're doing this. Back, together, and down. Excellent. Just think about opening up that chest while you're doing that. The next uh, warm-up activity I'm going to have you do is you're just going to go ahead and cross your arms across your chest. There you go. And what I want you to do is you're going to turn. First of all, you turn towards your right as far as you can. Turn your trunk, your upper body, and your head and your shoulders till you can, as far as you can go comfortably. And then you're going to turn back the opposite direction. Again, look all the way over your shoulder. Try to almost like you're looking behind you as you do this. Good. And we would do that three to five repetitions on each side. Now we're going to do some of these trunk rotations or, or turning your upper body to work on some flexibility in that. So keep your feet just like that. Keep them facing straight ahead. I just want you to take your upper body and turn as well as your head, kind of like you're trying to look over your shoulder all the way behind you as far as you can comfortably and then go back to the other side. Good. Excellent. So right now she's got some security and support from the harness but also some proprioceptive input from the back. If I didn't want you to do that, let's step forward just a little bit. Do that same thing without so much support. So go ahead and turn. Excellent. That's nice. Get some good rotation there. And then we're going to get some good rotation here. Okay. So again, these warm-ups are focusing more whole body movements trunk rotation, trunk extension. One of the foundational exercises that I think is important for a lot of uh, patients is some type of a strength exercise for the upper back, uh, working primarily trunk extensors. Um, so this is gonna be kind of a, what we call a lat pull. Um, or some type of a rowing uh, maneuver will be helpful for that. So in this case, we're going to be using our, our, our dowel bar here to use for this. Typically, you're going to take one of your bungees. In this case, we're going to be using a yellow bungee, which is equivalent of three pounds. Attach it to the number four attachment point on the side here, and then we're going to thread it right through the number one attachment point. That's going to give us a nice angle of pull here to kind of approximate a lap pull. So we're going to take this and we're going to give that to you and we're going to have you just kind of have your, your arms comfortably width apart there. Does that feel pretty good for you? And what I want you to do is just kind of be sitting up nice and tall. So this is level one, essentially somebody who's in a wheelchair um, who has difficulty with some trunk control at this point and has some now back support from the wheelchair helping. So go ahead and bring that back to your chest there. Good. And then nice and slow, let it out. Go ahead and bring that back. And I really want you to focus at the end. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Get that last little bit of squeeze there. Good. And give me a couple more of those. Good. For the next level of challenge for the lat pull um, exercise would be to have the person sitting on some type of a firm surface or mat table without back support. So now they're going to have to take control of their trunk and stabilize the trunk independently. So first of all, let's just get good posture here. So that nice and tall. There you go. Good. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go ahead and pull that back to our sternum here. There you go. Then let it out there, kind of that just as far as you can go, all the full range of motion. Remember that squeeze at the end between those shoulder blades. Excellent. One more time. Excellent. Good work. Our highest level of difficulty for the lap pull or rowing uh, type exercise is going to be doing it in a standing position because now again, they're having to maintain their balance and postural control in the standing position. Um, it changes the angle a little bit on the resistance, but as long as we're getting a nice pull to work those large uh, trunk extensors uh, and scapular stabilizers is what we're looking for here. So nice and good posture there, head up, looking straight ahead. I want you to pull that right to your chest there and squeeze at the end and let it out nice and slow and controlled. Good. And again, pull it back. Excellent job. One more time, good form.
Another activity or exercise for the upper body that's very important is some type of a overhead press. Um, in this case, we're going to be doing more what we call an incline press. So we're not going straight up overhead because that can be a challenge sometimes with impingement syndrome and arthritis and so forth. So we're doing kind of a modified incline press here to work on those muscles that are important for lifting overhead and getting into cupboards and those kind of things. Um, so we're going to take our, our bungee cords again here. And typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this into the number four. Thread it through the number six down here. So this is going to come up at a nice angle here for us. I'm going to use our handles so they can work each arm individually. Go ahead and place that here. Keep those wrists nice and st stable there. This one will be easy with that brace on, obviously. And what I want you to do is bring your start, start right up here. And I want you to bring those and punch those hands straight up to my arm. There you go. As hard as you can, straighten that elbow out. There you go. And bring it back down. Good. Now back up again here. Excellent. So working some anterior delt, middle delt, and triceps when we're doing this. Um, and you can see she's positioned in the wheelchair here, so she's got some back support. So this would be kind of our basic level one on this particular exercise. The next level of challenge for the same exercise is going to be sitting on our um, bench attachment that goes across the, the, hand, the, the handle supports. And so now what we've done is we're sitting on a firm surface here, but we don't have any back support. So she's going to have to do more control of the trunk while she's doing the same exercise. So here we go. Nice and good posture to start with. You're going to punch those straight this way, kind of up and, and forward, up and forward. Good, and back down. And you can tell she's working very hard, so we do want you to work hard, but shouldn't be too much pain with this. Just a more of a work effort. Excellent. Good. The last level of, of uh, difficulty for this exercise is going to be in a standing position. So again, now she's supporting more of herself. To start with, she's actually got her back against the pad here to give her just a little bit of uh, you know, comfort that she's got that support. So we're going to do a couple of repetitions with that. So we've also changed the position where we've got the attachment points. We've moved it down from number four to number five to give us a little added length since she's now in a standing position. So let's go ahead and try to bring those straight out this way, a little up and out, up and out, good, and back down. One more of those. Excellent, good. And then if we want to make that even more challenging is to take a step forward away from the back support and then you would do that same activity. Okay, so let's just do one of those. Excellent, and back down. Good. The next lower body exercise we're going to perform is a seated knee extension. So this is just working again, large muscle groups, especially extensors of the legs. So this is, in this case, the quadricep muscles. And so we've got you seated on our bench here. We're going to take our resistance cord here that we're going to select appropriate to your level. And I'm going to attach this on the number three attachment point, thread it through the bottom here, the number six, and attach it to our ankle cuff right here. And so what I want you to do is you're just going to go ahead and straighten that knee out and kick on up. Good. And then down slow. There you go. Nice and controlled. Let's do that again. And down. So just adjust the resistance as appropriate to achieve your desired level of resistance. Now we're moving on to some more foundational exercises for the lower body. Um, so the first thing we're going to start with is working the hip abductors. So very important for stabilization and function and balance. Um, however, if somebody is not able to do those in standing, we'll start in a sitting position. So in this case, we've just basically used our bench uh, surface here, a nice firm surface to hold on to and sit to do these exercises. And we've simply wrapped our TheraBand around the legs here. And we're going to work on doing some taking your knees and moving them apart, using the muscles in your legs, not your hands, but good. Let's hold on to the bench there and do the same thing. Excellent. Good. So we're getting a nice exercise here to work the hip abductors in a supported environment. 
So if your patient can stand for these hip abduction exercises, then we definitely want to do this in a standing position. So in this case, we're going to again use our bungee cords and we're going to start by placing this here. I'm going to go ahead and clip this into the number two slot here and then come down through the number six and then attach it to our ankle strap that we've applied here. She's now able to use her hand support here for the, uh, give her a little stability. Plus she's got her side against the pad here to give her a little fulcrum there. And so what we're gonna have you do is you're gonna go ahead and just bring your hip out to the side, trying to keep your toe straight as you can, straight forward if you can. There you go, then bring it back down, excellent. So I wanna tighten right here, go ahead and bring it out, straight out, 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 toes forward, excellent, and back. One more time. Good. And as she progresses, we can decrease the amount of support. She uses her arms and also move her away from the pad a little bit. So she has to then maintain some of her own trunk control and stability. Another uh, important exercise for the lower body is to work the gastroc. Um, Again, very important for posture and balance and for functional activities like going up and down stairs. So we're going to go through a progression for trying to work the gastroc using some basic heel raises to start with in a sitting position on our bench. And we're going to use some resistance um, using our resistance tubing or bungees here. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to go ahead and thread it through these lower attachment points. And we're going to go up over the top of the legs here, thread it through the other one and we're just going to attach them together to each other and now we've got this going across the tops of the thighs here provide some resistance and we're going to have you your job is just to go ahead and raise those heels off the ground and your heels <laughs> so point your toes there you go that's it excellent so push up good so we're getting some nice resistance there to start to work a little bit of gastroc however with the knee bent here we're also getting some soleus and maybe even more soleus but if she can only do a sitting position this is where we may start with so if the patient can stand for any type of heel raise we want to do it in a standing position so we've got you standing here and she's got her hands for support on the arm um, supports here so what i want you to do is basically just go ahead and raise up your heels and onto your toes and then back down good we'll do a couple more of those and down. So this is just our traditional heel raise on a flat surface um, bilaterally. The next level of progression for a heel raise um, is going to be doing it over the edge of our portable step here. So this step just folds down. This is the four inch step setting and we're just going to have you do the same thing. You're going to raise up onto your toes but then you're going to drop your heels off the edge there. So we're going to increase the range of motion a little bit here, get through fuller range of motion, plus get an additional stretch. So do a couple more of those. Drop the heels. Good. One more. Excellent. The next level of progression with our heel raise is going to be doing a heel raise in which we have one limb or one leg up on a step and the other leg back behind in sort of what we call stride stance position here. So this is going to shift and we're going to ask you to shift most of your weight to that back leg. So this is like doing a single leg heel raise, but they still, still have some support with the front leg. So many patients do have difficulty going straight from a double leg to a single leg heel raise. So this is kind of a nice transition between that. Um, so what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and use just your left leg and you're going to go ahead and heel raise. And you can adjust how hard that is by how much weight you're putting back onto that left leg and how much you're supporting with your right leg. You can also make it harder by making the step higher. The higher the step, the more weight's going to get shifted back onto that left leg. And then we'd obviously switch and do that bilaterally. So a real foundational exercise for the lower body um, is going to be some type of a sit to stand or squat type of maneuver. So starting with the lower functioning uh, patient um, is having more challenge with that procedure. We're going to go ahead and talk about some of those things. So the first thing is you'll notice we've placed on, this is a belt that we use for sit to stand and also for a standing frame option. This is an optional feature. And we also have included here, we've put on a knee block. Um, so this knee block provides a counter 
to her knees coming forward here and also provide just a nice safe environment if she were to slide forward as she's doing these exercises she wouldn't uh, fall off the table here it gives her a little fulcrum point there for her knees if needed and then we've moved the arm supports here to give her again a level of comfort so she can really practice these sit to stands in a safe independent environment we're actually going to use the bungees here to provide some level of assistance then we can progressively lower the level of assistance by decreasing the amount of help from the bungees. So these are our thicker bungees that can provide a little more support. We're going to start by hooking onto the number five on the side here, thread it through the number one. We've already done that on their side. And then we're going to come down and attach those to our hooks here, our triangular openings here on our sit to stand harness. It's going to provide some support and some help through the ischium and the gluteal fold area to kind of help with that um, sit to stand procedure. So we just want to make sure you're in good position here, good posture, feet nicely back underneath your knees there, out on the edge of the table here. So what I want you to do, good, excellent. You're going to lean forward and stand straight up, good, and then back down. Go ahead and up, good. Make sure you bend at the waist and reach your butt out to touch the, there you go, good. Now lean forward and come up nice and tall, excellent. The next level of difficulty for a sit to stand type of activity, now what we've done is use the bench um, that we've placed in here and we've adjusted it to a level that is a little bit higher than a typical chair so it's a little easier for her to start with. So we've got her hips a little higher than her knees here, feet nice and flat on the floor and ankles back behind the knees, there you go. We've given her some of the activity poles to provide a little bit of dynamic support here, give her a little security, however she, these will move with her as she does the procedure so she can't pull up on them per se. Um, so what I want you to do is just we're going to go ahead and lean forward and stand up. Good. And back down. There you go. Let's do a couple more of those. Good. And back down. Great. So that looks so easy for you. Now what we're going to do for the next level of progression here is we're just going to take these away. <laughs> Place them back here behind us here. Good. Can you cross your arms in front of your chest there? You don't have to be tight. Just, you know, just down here. That's, there you go. That shoulder, right? Um, now what I want you to do is go ahead and lean forward and stand up. Good. And then sit back down, nice and slow and easy. Good. And again, excellent. And back down. Great. So the other things we can. Yep. Well, your position of the feet is very critical. So the other thing you're going to do, if, if you want to progress this, is you can then lower that bench. Additional things you can do is add something like a weighted vest if you really want to make it a challenge. Um, so those are all alternatives for making the sit to stand procedure uh, more or less challenging. For your patients who aren't quite ready to do challenging standing activities for balance, we can start with just doing some sitting activities. So we've got her safely supported in the harness here to give her some comfort there and some confidence that so she can work on her some of her balance skills and activities. First of all, let's just scoot out to the edge of that table a little bit further there. So we've got her on the bench here and we're going to start with just doing some reaching activities. So we're going to take our rolling bedside tables here and we're going to place them in a position here that's going to make it a little challenge for you. What I'm going to have you do is you're going to reach for that ball on that table. Good and then go ahead and transfer that and place it up on this table. That's a weighted ball, so it's a little heavy, right? So, um, so good, that's a good challenge. Let's go ahead and do that back the other direction. <laughs> good catch. And transferring over. Good. So there's just some reach, some basic functional reaching activities we can do. Another thing we can do is just some of our basic using a ball of some type here. And we're going to do some ball tosses. Um, so you're just going to go ahead and I'm going to bounce this to you. You're just going to go ahead and catch the ball. Good. Excellent. I'm going to throw it just directly to you and try to catch that. Good. <laughs> You have to get it back. Excellent. Good. Um, so really, again, you can just use your imagination. Um, as they progress, we can actually go to where we can remove this. So go ahead and stand up for me. 
good. We can then take the bench out and we would use a larger ball here, but we can actually take a larger ball and sit it on the floor and then we can adjust the length of these so they can do seated ball activities to again progress that to the next level. Um, even on the bench itself, we can do things like placing some softer foam um, or some of the Dyna discs to make that a more challenging environment for maintaining postural control. Last set of activities we're going to perform are geared towards just balance and agility. Um, so very critical, obviously, for maintaining um, function and preventing falls. So we're going to go through a little progression with that. So starting with basically just static alignment um, and ability to tolerate different postures, um, surfaces, conditions, and also with eyes open and eyes closed. So looking a little bit at sensory integration orientation. So got you nice and safe here in the harness here so you look like you're ready to go here for this exercise. So the first thing I want you to do is just, let's, we're just going to play with your base of support where your feet position is. So be able to bring your feet together for me so they're almost touching like that. If the individual has some challenges, even with that level, we can also bring down our arm, our arm supports if they feel like they need a little bit of support. Or sometimes we'll even use the activity poles for a little bit more of a dynamic type of support here. However, if at all possible, you don't want to have any upper extremity support for any of the balance activities you're doing. So I think you're good enough to do it without the upper extremities involved here. So, all right. So. Good, that looks good. So how about if you try to take one foot and put it slightly in front of the other? So we're going to go into what we call a semi-tandem stance now. So just kind of halfway. There you go. And try to maintain that balance. I can tell that's a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. So we might just do this for 30 seconds to a minute. Make her challenge herself and maybe switch the position of the feet. Again, just adjusting base of support. So go ahead and put your other foot back with the other one now. Keep them close together like that. So that's a little bit of a challenge for you. Mm -hmm. Now close your eyes. So go ahead and close your eyes and keep your balance. Good. So it's a little bit of a challenge. You might go 30 seconds to a minute with some eyes closed. Go ahead and spread your feet apart just a little wider. That looks good. Close your eyes. Now what I want you to do is to go ahead and do some head turns with this. Go ahead and turn your head side to side and just try to keep your balance as you do some head turns. Nice and slow and controlled. So now we're engaging the vestibular system making it a little more challenging on that with her eyes closed, doesn't have an ability to um, find a focal spot, so good. So those are some things we can do for changing base of support, altering vision, head and eye movements. The other thing we can do is obviously use some type of a foam, foam surface. So I'm going to go ahead and say, why don't you step back just a little bit for me. There you go. Place that foam in place there. Now you're going to go ahead and step up onto the foam. I can, there you go. Good. She's up on the foam now. I'm going to take a little slack up in these here just to make her feel a little more secure. So I'm just going to pull that through the ropemans there, the safety ropemans. How are you doing on that? Mm -hmm. Good. So right there, go ahead and look straight ahead and just try to keep your balance. So in this case, just standing on the foam with the eyes open is a good challenge for her. Now let's go ahead just for kicks. Go ahead and close your eyes. Not bad. Depending on how much support we want to give, we can make these tighter or looser that will catch her earlier or later in her you know, ability to recover her balance. The next level of balance activities I like to include in any type of agility or balance training um, is the what we call dynamic control or more specifically anticipatory postural control, which the person, they are anticipating what they're going to do. They're the one directing the movement and um, having to control their own movements during this process. So we're going to start with a few little activities here to do that. One of the main things I do that is very functional is some type of a reaching procedure. So a little couple uh, rolling tables or boxes or benches work really well for this. Rolling tables are nice because you can adjust distances and heights and those kind of things. So we're going to place that there. We're going to place this up over here. And your job that's a weighted ball there, so it's a little heavier than what you might expect, so just be a little careful there. But you're going to go ahead and reach with your right arm, go ahead and grab that ball, keeping your feet where they're at if you can. A little far, there you go. And then place that ball up over onto this table, keeping your feet where they're at. Excellent, okay. So let's do that and do the opposite direction. There you go. that weight if you need to. There you go. Excellent. 
So there's a nice reaching procedure. And now the next thing we might do is something, again, we're working on this anticipatory type of control or dynamic control that is self-initiated, is I'm going to go ahead and give you a little ball here to work with, a big ball, actually. And I just want you to do a few things for me. I want you to just go ahead and take that ball. I want you to bring it up kind of over your head and then back down if you can. And then back down. Good. Now just take that ball and I want you just to kind of bring it to one side and then the other. That looks pretty easy for you. Good. Excellent. So now we're going to do, take the ball and we're going to do a little bit where we're going to be tossing it back and forth. I'm going to bounce it to you the first few times, okay? So you're just going to have to catch that. So I'm going to bounce that to you. Good. We're going to make you go a little bit different directions. Good. Excellent. And we'll kick it a few times too. So you're just going to try to kick that back to me. Good. Try kicking it with your other leg, with your left leg. Good. Excellent. So these are just to give you just some very rough or simple examples of the types of dynamic balance activities you can do. You can obviously do anything you can think of that involves these types of, of movements and again, more anticipatory in nature where they're the one driving the activity. The most challenging type of balance um, activity we're going to work on is called reactive postural control. And the research is really showing that this is an essential element for preventing falls and one we frequently don't work on very often. So we're going to use an uh, accessory here, an optional accessory called the slip trainer. Um, this is a narrow one that's designed to go underneath the slip trainer here. So we're going to first of all take that and slip this underneath the rehab station like so. Okay. So now what we're going to do is, and then we're going to have our patient who's going to step onto this. This is somebody who's going to be, again, a little more higher functioning that you're going to be using this with, so they should be able to step onto, this, onto the slip trainer reasonably well. I'm going to place my foot on here and kind of keep that pulled against me so it's stable here, so it shouldn't go anywhere. So you're just going to go ahead and step up onto that. Good. And we're going to back up a little bit there, and I'm going to place you into the harness and support here. Um, you can hold that just for a moment. I'm going to cinch you up here, give you a little bit of security. So pull the rope through and just get the nice little secure. Put your rope back here. We can place the arm supports on the side here down if we want to give them a little added security. You're going to step back just a little further. There you go. Perfect. If you want, you can hold on here. That's great, okay? We're going to start out very, with some very mild perturbations that she's not expecting. And you don't have to move the slip trainer very much to induce the effect we're looking for. So we're looking for posture reactions initially, maybe just inducing some small ankle responses or hip reactions, and then eventually some even some stepping reactions. So let's just start with some very small ones, okay? So you're going to place your hands at your side now. There you go. And I'm going to be moving this. I might put, pull it forward or push it back, and your job is just to keep your balance. If you have to take a step to keep your balance, that's okay. Okay? So, you ready? Okay, so it's very small there. Good. Good. There you go. If you have to take a little step, that's okay. Excellent. So we can just progressively work on higher levels of, of balance with this, making those uh, perturbations a larger amplitude um, and faster uh, within reason to the patient's tolerance.